By way of sort of bleeding into the scientific session, I just want to say that um, uh, you know many people who are not scientists say, "Do you guys ever talk to people you know from other institutions, and and uh, uh, or do you just sort of work in these little silos and and compete?" And I, I have to say that Huntington's disease is a uh, a wonderful example of the of the cooperation. I, I mentioned that I have a uh, I have a project uh, involved uh, in Huntington's disease. I use uh, genetically modified mice that carry a human mutation. Those mice came from uh, Marie France. Chesley from uh, here at uh, UCLA, and there are many investigators here at UCLA who have been uh, deeply involved in sort of basic cellular studies to try to understand what is going on uh, when cells carry this uh, this uh, disorder gene that is uh, responsible for the human disease. Um, so uh, we'll lead on then into the, the future, what uh, kinds of uh, things might be possible with uh, stem cell applications in Huntington's disease. And the next speaker is Hans Kirstedt. Most of you know Hans. Uh, he has been primarily involved in developing stem cell technologies for spinal cord injury, but recently uh, has branched out uh, significantly and is uh, actively working on uh, developing stem cells for many other disorders. Um, he has uh, been at the Revervine Research Center for uh, eight years now. He was the uh, first person that I recruited. I could not have made a better choice, I just have to say. Uh, he has uh, been wonderfully accomplished in uh, so many different things. Uh, he's now an associate professor at the center. Uh, co-director of the Sue and Bill Gross uh, Stem Cell Center at our shop, and uh, as you all know, responsible for really some incredible discoveries over the past few years. So, Hans. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, it's a real uh, um, exciting time for me as I um, move, it seems, from um, spinal cord injury out into a couple of different fields, applying some of the tricks that we've learned in derivation of high purity populations. Um, and I feel very, very lucky and very fortunate with the skill set that we've developed to be able to translate those things into other disease states. I have to say that I approach um, that type of work um, with a great uh, amount of skepticism because it's actually my belief that um, there are few diseases that are treatable with uh, high purity populations of derivates now. I think that um, there are many that will be treatable um, soon. There are a handful that I think will be treatable in the short term with high purity derivates of um, stem cell drive populations. And um, I, I have to say that I've been approached by several disease groups asking whether or not um, we would put our uh, talents towards deriving high purity populations of one thing or another. And um, after some investigation of those um, opportunities, I really decline more than I accept because it's a tremendous amount of work. Um, when Leslie approached me um, to talk to me about Huntington's, I was an absolute convert. I think there are a few disease states that are going to be uh, treatable with um, cell populations and that could use a high purity cell population for really meaningful um, discovery of disease mechanisms. And Huntington's disease is truly, in my opinion, one of the few diseases that's uh, applicable in the short term to both of those strategies. So if I do some gross generalizations here, um, I believe that stem cells are most suitable for cellular replacement when we know what it is that we want to replace. In Huntington's disease, we certainly know that. That's a, that's a rare case. Not all neurodegenerative diseases do we actually have a defined therapeutic target. When the bar is not too high, now that's a gross oversimplification, but um, we're not talking about the integration of a cell type that has to connect to um, another cell type that's a great distance away in the human body where we'll have to navigate hostile terrain and growth inhibition. We're talking about a very focal area, so the bar is actually relatively lower than most disease states. And when the subject will actually support the host, and fortunately, the nature of stem cell biology and cellular replacement is that we put in progenitors, and they can actually nurse the environment. We've seen a number of investigators over the last few years demonstrate that. Some of that work out of my laboratory, much more out of other laboratories throughout the world. So I think that we have the the hit the basic criteria for cellular replacement one of the couple of strategies so Huntington of course is um, it's a complex uh, biology through the discovery of many people in the room here um, 
Uh, we know a fair bit about it. We know that it's absolutely essential for development. We know that um, there's no sequence homology with other proteins, so that makes it a very, very uh, unique target. That it acts as a transcription factor in upregulating a couple of things, one of them BDNF. That it's associated with vesicles and microtubules, that it plays a functional role in cytoskeletal anchoring and transport of um, mitochondria. That it interacts with a great number of proteins. But the actions mediated by those interactions are absolutely um, in their infancy. There's so many proteins that are being interacted with that it's really, really in its infancy. So disease, um, sorry, um, therapeutic targets really um, haven't been fully defined in this, nor have the mechanism. So that really calls for one of the two approaches that I see stem cells being of use to this field. And one, of course, is the derivation of new lines for Huntington's. It absolutely amazes me that there is not a handful, not one, human embryonic stem cell line of uh, HD. That's just remarkable. With the uh, technologies of deriving um, embryonic stem cells from blastocysts, with the um, adoption of prenatal genetic diagnoses by many HD um, couples, or HD-bearing couples, it amazes me that we don't yet have a stem cell line, or two, or three, or four, or 30, or 300, that bear this mutation, a mutation in a gene that we absolutely know of and that we have access to. So I'm really pleased to say that my laboratory's recently um, been IRB approved to make new lines. We've um, derived them from both morulas and from blastocysts and from epiblasts. And uh, this is the inaugural uh, introduction of Hoochie One, a uh, UCI, human UCI uh, embryonic stem cell line. The, might, the name might not stick, you'll have to tell me. But um, we are deriving new lines at UCI. We're IRB approved to both make new lines from blastocyst derivation as well as new lines from somatic cell nuclear transfer, all human. We're working on that latter one. Um, this one is um, very, very routine now. And we have recently, I have recently established relationships with fertility clinics. And I had now have access to over 10,000 blastocysts a month. That's phenomenal. That's a phenomenal amount of tissue. And uh, it took me a long time to get that infrastructure set up, but it is now set up. And this is the first product of that. And I uh, predict, and you can hold me to this, several more lines coming out of uh, UCI and several institutions, of course, over this coming year. But um, we are already um, receiving phone calls from Huntington's, uh, um, people with Huntington's disease that have undergone fertility clinics that have eight HD positive blast that they would like to channel our way. Um, I have um, about 14 such individuals so far with uh, the three fertility clinics that I'm working with. That is phenomenal. It amazes me that no such lines exist right now, not a one in the entire world, yet we will know precisely how to uh, obtain those things. We know very routinely how to make them, but it just speaks to the um, young state of this field and uh, the fact that um, we need more people with embryology laboratories and access to these things. So um, I think that this is going to be one of the major, major tools by um, with these modifier loci, with the uh, numerous lengths of that uh, triplicate repeat, uh, we can not make one line. It's not going to be one line with HD. It's going to need a bunch of lines to really figure out mechanism. Well, we now have the ability to do that, and so we are really, truly at the dawn of a turning point in HD with pr the provision of excellent research tools for all of these incredible HD scientists. I see it as uh, my con contribution to the game to simply make the lines and hand them off to the experts who can then use them. Um, the other uh, second point that I would like to make is the derivation of high purity um, striatal uh, gabinergic interneurons, or these uh, MSPs. Um, it's been the uh, focus of my work since uh, I began working with stem cells to do nothing less than this bar, um, to derive high purity 
human stem cell populations and those two yellow lines at the bottom in an FDA compliant manner that is commercially scalable. It's not because I want to run a big biotech company when I grow up. It's because I would like biotechnology companies to throw the $350 million or so that it's going to take to run this stuff through the clinic. And if we don't generate commercially viable quantities that are FDA compliant, we're not going to get that to happen. You can't walk into the FDA, two guys and a rat, and say, let me try this in humans. You have to uh, say that you've got a GMP production. You've got to say that that is scalable. You've got to do all of your preclinical safety and toxicology, biodistribution, allodynia, um, tumorigenesis, and toxicity studies and efficacy studies, all with your final formulation, GMP scalable quality product. That's the bar that I've set for the laboratory. Um, and uh, we are um, cranking these things out. And um, let me just show you some of the work that we've done more recently than, you, and than many of you may have seen. Um, we began pushing towards uh, central nervous system neuronal progenitors, not oligodendrocytes, but neuronal progenitors more recently and um, have developed um, scalable 1 to 10 billion cell grow capacities in a GMP, sorry, in an FDA compliant manner in-house um, where we can grow up in large scalable quantities cells, push them to neural epithelial lineages, push them to um, very large cultures. The panel on the right is some uh, two or three hundred thousand cells, not a small uh, cluster of cells indicative of spontaneous uh, differentiation in a in a sea of other tissue, <clears throat> but rather directed differentiation to over 98% pure neuronal, not neural, but neuronal, those are brain um, cell committed progenitors. And uh, they stain with the markers that you'd expect them to if you zoom out and you zoom out again. It's, we're not talking about a handful of cells in the middle of a dish surrounded by all three germ layers. We're talking about homogeneous wall of neuronal progenitors. So this what I would like to do, uh, what I'm fairly certain we can do, is um, pan this population for um, uh, DARP32, GABA, etc., and see how lucky we've simply gotten in um, how many uh, um, striatal interneurons are actually in this mix. And then we are currently designing and have made some good strides in uh, specializing media conditions in order to push them to become um, only striatal interneurons, as we have done with oligodendrocytes, motor neurons, and uh, neural progenitors, uh, cardiomyocytes, and sinoatrial node cells. So the, these uh, populations, I think, are going to be tremendously uh, useful. I, um, I just want to end in saying that I, I don't think we should lose sight of the, the power of this. If um, we can actually make high purity populations of striatal interneurons, what's going to happen to this field is precisely what's going to happen to the spinal cord field, which is um, a commercial entity will come in and value add that more researchers will take those cells, as have many individuals now in the world with the oligodendrocytes that I developed, and begin working on them in high purity format. And we're going to see a turning point. It's truly the dawn of a new era for HD. I truly believe that. And so I'm happy to be part of the um, um, initiative, playing uh, one role in uh, an initiative that Leslie's put together with uh, Disease Team Grant as well. So thank you very much.